Hey there guys, alright, welcome back to another awesome video. We have another top 10 video. Today's top 10 video is going to be the top 10 has-been hotel characters. For a while, I've been trying to talk about has-been hotel, but there have been a few technical difficulties in the past couple months. So hopefully I'll get back to that and we'll maybe talk about that and review that for another time. But for today, we're going to talk about my favorite characters from the Hasman Hotel series since this series has been around already for months and it's created such a big fandom. And the fact that we're going to have a season two and perhaps maybe multiple seasons after that, we shall see. But in honor of all this happening for this series and this show landing on its two feet and being something unique in its own way, let's talk about my favorite characters. Since we are going to be talking a little bit in depth about these characters, there will be a bit of a spoiler warning if you haven't seen season one of Hasman Hotel. So I definitely recommend you check it out if you have Amazon Prime. So do go do so. And without further ado, without further delay, without further distractions, let's jump right into this. At number 10, we have Cherry Bomb. As a character, she's just wild. She's rambunctious. She's a wild card. She's fun. She's sporadic and very chaotic. And that's pretty much all I can really say. And I think that's what we love about her is her chaoticness and that she is this unexpected, unpredictable person filled with so much let's say vibrant violence to say and to go a little more into her a little bit later on but for now this is cherry bomb at number nine some of you might not like where i've done with this list but we shall see at number nine is angel dust i know this one's a fan favorite and probably would be expected a lot higher but i have a method to my madness for a few reasons i like angel dust a lot don't get me wrong because there is there is more to him than meets the eye. He isn't just for looks. He isn't just appearances. He isn't just an act. And I think that's the, the important thing we need to touch on with Angel Dust is that he's not the, the, pers the quote, persona and act and the whole humor and the whole porn star thing he hides an behind act. is not just an it's act, really. There There is, and unfortunately, this, more to this, him, this to his character. Escape. He's feels like he's just trapped all. sometimes. He feels just insecure, but trying to redeem himself, but he doesn't know how to. And he's maybe doing it in the wrong way, or maybe he's trying to set himself on the right way, but it's like something keeps pulling him back. He's like chained, literally, to Val. Valentino's got him like, like literally change. working him day in, day out. Oh, so he tries to redeem himself. He wants to get to heaven and have a good arc and be a good person, but he's chained by someone very sadistic and very seductive. So he's kind of caught between the borderline of someone that is free, but someone who is enslaved. Number eight is Vaggy. We have to give a little appreciation to Charlie Morningstar's lover. I mean, not only is it the fact that that romance between the two of them is so adorable, it's cute, it's genuine, it feels honest, but also that she's a bit of a badass, so she kind of is that like rougher side that kind of counteracts Charlie's optimism, like where Charlie's the more like happy-go-lucky, she's the more down-to-earth, more grounded, more blunt, straight to the point. And I think that's why we like the delivery of her dry wit and her dry humor, kind of. And I think that works very well because of Stephanie Beatrice's performance as this character, both with her acting lines and with how beautifully she can sing, too. And number seven is Vox. Vox is, I'd say, one of my favorite Hasbro Hotel villains. I know there's a lot of people in this universe that feel like villains, but Vox would be one of my favorites. And I just love his design. I love that he kind of embodies technology. He embodies television. He embodies entertainment. He's got just this uniqueness to him. But what I really like also about him is that he feels like a shark in the two types of sharks. Like, you know, there's the shark the entrepreneur type of shark like he has that business attribute to him a little but he also feels like an actual literal shark that will just circle around his prey waiting for the moment to strike get his revenge and strike for the kill and i think that's really great about vox but he should have stayed away while he hid in radio we pivoted to video now his medium is Six is Serpentious, a once villain actually gets a redemption arc and actually has this heroic sacrifice in this heroic moment. And I think that all helps with Alex Brightman being Serpentious and it still surprises me 
even though I've already known this knowledge for months, it still blows me away that this is Alex Brightman. Yes, this is Beetlejuice. I love how awkward he is. I love how anxious he can be, but I love how intimidating he actually is. It's a nice balance. I'm a sucker for just I like the design of him because I like the blacks. I like that he's a cobra and I like the snake sort of like attributes, abilities they kind of give him. Like there's this one moment he uses this hypnosis at one point or another. And again, it's it's that beautiful sacrifice he makes, not only for his new family, but for his his new beloved Sherry Bomb. And he just goes out like a champ. He goes out like a real hero, honestly. All right, I'm nearing down my final five my list. And number five is Adam. Speaking of Alex Brightman, I had to put Adam on here. I, I technically like Vox a little bit more, but I think the more I think about it, I like Adam because not only because of Brightman, but also he's an asshole. He's a huge dick, and I know he's the literal dick, but I think that's the the thing that we like about him, but it's like a love-hate thing, but it's more like we know he's an asshole. We know that he's just so just hypocritical and kind of like a jerk and kind of like got this like jock, like rocker, edger, bro type of energy, but I think that's why we like him. That's why we hate him, but I think it's more along the lines of why we like him because it's humorous, but it's also like, he's not someone to take lightly. He is someone that can be taken serious, especially since he is like the Adam, like he's Adam and Eve. He's like the, the fallen angel or the angel, and he's all powerful, but to an extent. And number four is Alistair. I have to put Alistair at least at the top five for how just this, this character for sure is unpredictable because at one moment you feel like he could be an ally to you, but the next moment he f could perhaps be a potential enemy to you. It doesn't, you never know. He's always two sides of the coin. You never know with Alistair because he's always making deals. He's always thinking ahead of himself. He's always thinking five steps ahead of everybody because we have no idea what he's got planned for everybody and who really is behind Alistair? Like, is he a free being? Is he a free deity? Or is he also being puppeted and kind of like enslaved and chained up as well? We don't know for sure, but there is definitely big plans for Alistair and just how narcissistic, how sarcastic, and just how witty he can be as well. And number three is Charlie Morningstar. I was kind of gonna put Alistair above Charlie, but I just, I'm kind of in a small, small tiny way relate to that optimism that Charlie has because she is in this world that is just filled with terrible shit eating people but she tries to not see all that and tries to at least look at the brighter side of things and something that I feel like we could all use a little more of is that hey let's look on the flip side of things or let's try and maybe make this world a better place and that's what she wants to do she wants to redeem all sinners to go to heaven so that way everyone is p more pure and more wholesome and kind of a little bit more just a better person even when you're not perfect even she's not perfect for someone who's the daughter of lucifer she knows her imperfections and i think that's also the other thing that we can also relate to too number two is husker i think there is a little bit of empathy and a little bit of sympathy to husker as much as he is very crude he is very much just He's the gruffy old guy who's seen it all, done it all and everything. And he is powerful and he's powerfully voiced by the legendary Keith David. But there is a bit of empathy to a little bit of his story that maybe him and Angel Dust aren't so different. Or perhaps that he is a man that was once down on his luck and it's just a matter of getting back up on your feet. There is just something to that small bit of flashback that we see with Husker that you kind of just feel a little bad about him. And I think... That's a just, I think that is enough. Now before we unveil my number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Velvet, where Vox is more in the entertainment side of things, Velvet's more along the lines of like, she tries to be the, the influencer, social media, that sort of aspect of technology and fashion and all these other things. And I think that's just kind of cool. Emily, she's just so wholesome. She's just so sweet and innocent and especially when she finds out what's really been going on with the angels and everything else with hell. Zestiel, a very probably overlooked or underlooked character and a side character but still a uniquely looking one, very tall and voiced excellently by James Inglehart Monroe. I think it's Inglehart Monroe or Monroe Inglehart. I forget how his name is arranged. 
But without further ado, my number one pick, my top 10 favorite has been hotel characters is drumroll please <laughs> lucifer i know there's been many iterations of lucifer there's something just unique about this version of lucifer i think it maybe is the fact that he's not what we expected because the build up to lucifer you're thinking he's this like He's the he's the the king of all hell. He, we're thinking like this very evil person and this very terrifying presence. And then we're introduced to this looking guy. And I think that's the great twist of it. And I like that it's a different interpretation. It's a different approach, especially when he was someone that was once a good wholesome guy, and they just and basically heaven kind of rejected him. And I know that kind of makes Heaven is really the villain for outcasting Lucifer just because he was weird. And that might be interpreted wrong, but I think there is this, I think there's something about this show that really does the whole, like, the good guys are the bad guys, and the bad guys are kind of the good guys. Kind of like a fairy tale spin and flip on its head sort of ordeal. And Lucifer kind of has that same aspect to him and it's kind of interesting he's kind of funny he's kind of quirky he's a simp of a father but he just wants to do right for his daughter he wants to do right for his people he just has a lot maybe just inside of him that's never really shared upon but that doesn't stop him from being the prince of darkness i mean he is still one of the seven deadly sins he is still the king of hell he will mess people up especially when it comes to his daughter charlie and although Nifty technically was the one that killed Adam, he's the one that really gave Adam a run for his money and really just really sicked all his rage and sicked all of his living, bitch. breathing hell on Adam. And it just shows how powerful he is, how intimidating he is. But he, this also shows a different side of him that's more brighter, more humorous, and kind of just more intriguing. And those are my favorite characters of Hasman Hotel. Let me know in the comments section down below, what are your favorites? And as always guys, thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, please smash that button. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe to watch videos every day, if not every week. Make sure you ring that bell, the new videos every week. Share the video with your friends, all that good stuff, and more leave suggestions down in the comments, you name it. I'll look into it as best as possible. I know there's also a hell of a boss out there that has also been done by Vivian Madreno. And if you guys want, if we get this to like 20 likes, 30 likes, maybe 40 likes, as soon as possible. With that aside, there will be another top 10 video. There will be my X-Men 97 series review or season review, I should say. I want to say either before this or after this, depending on how things will be scheduled. I'm doing all this in bulk, but look out for another top 10 video and more things to come. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next time.